But that's what you would change, Matty. This is not a drill. Um, references. references. <laughs> So what's the greatest? What's the greatest? <laughs> Craig David. In about filming. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was my first. Oh my goodness, that was. Right, hi everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda, and. I do videos all about lifestyle and medicine and um, Friday we use the lifestyle for questions. And at the moment we're on a little staycation, a child free staycation and we've come to Cambridge. But whilst we're here, we I have persuaded my lovely husband here, Raph, um, to do a video with me. And um, I put onto my Instagram stories what you know asking what you would like to see. And it was between our love story and a bit of a more random question and answer type video. And it came out at 50-50 basically. Okay, 49% versus 51%. So we felt like we had to do both. So this is the first one, and this is the more random questions. And um, New York Times a few years ago put out 36 questions to make anyone fall in love. And so we thought, even though we're already in love, we thought, you know, we'd, um, <laughs> we thought we'd go through the questions. We're not gonna do all 36 now. There are three sets of the questions, um, and we're gonna do two questions from each of them. And it's just things to kind of get to know each other, isn't it? We already know each other, but, you know, it might surprise you. Changes, isn't it? Stuff changes. Yeah, stuff changes. It might surprise, it might surprise each other with the answers. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good date night idea. Um, even if you're already married or maybe it's like a first date or whatever, get these questions out and have some good chats. So let's get into it. Let go. I'll leave a link down below where you can find these 36 questions. Actually, there's quite a few videos on YouTube of like first blind dates doing the 36 questions. And so I'll link that channel down below as well because that's where I got the idea from. Should we start with number one? Given the choice of anyone in the world, mm -hmm. whom would you want as a dinner guest? Living or dead? Or just living? It just says anyone in the world. So let's go for living. Living. Okay, you go first because my one's very obvious. Answer my own <laughs> question. Um, yeah, we're, gonna, we're both going to answer one. Okay. Uh, alive or dead? It's a tough one. Um, if I could... I don't know, man. It's a, it's a really tough one. One guest. I mean... There's a lot of people that... Uh, I wonder if you're going to say who I'm thinking. There's a lot of people that I admire. Um, and it just depends on the day. Do you know what? Today. Today. today today's doing a guest. Right here, right now. I've, I, I really think it's, it's a very difficult question. Uh, I'm just going to say Uncle Ian. Ian Wright? Ian Wright, right, right. Okay, um, I should have guessed that. Yeah, today. But there's, there's loads in it. I thought you were going to say Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry, uh, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle. Oh, Eddie Murphy. J. Cole. Like, there's a lot of people that I'd like to see. But today you want Uncle Ian. Uncle Ian. Will Smith is up there as well, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd go for Uncle Ian. Okay. Man's, man's doing bits right now. Um, cool. He's doing... I feel like he's doing a lot... Uh, Especially before the before the pandemic as well, um, he was doing a lot more to kind of, um, I guess, submerge himself in his culture and the younger people in his culture, and he really supports uh, young black people. Um, and he's an Arsenal legend, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Ian, right, right, right. Okay, right, my one. Mm. I'm actually thinking because there's quite a few. I know who like the immediate answer is, mm. but like I do feel like there's a few people I could pick from. They're all like really powerful women. You didn't choose any women as your options for dinner. That was... Because I'm married. What am I doing? Inviting women around to my house for dinner? You know, invite an old woman. Some wisdom. But anyway, I've not got any men. Um, although there are some, you know, awesome men. But I think... I don't know, because I've just read her book and she's got three kids. And I just think she's pretty cool. Like, And the things that she's created um, and put out there in the world are things that I've really, um, you know, got taken a lot of um, insights and knowledge from and inspiration from. So actually, I think I'm gonna go with Shonda Rhimes. I know you thought I was gonna say Michelle Obama. Mm. And Michelle Obama was the first one that came to mind, but I've just finished reading Shonda Rhimes' book, um, The Year of Yes, and it was quite inspirational. 
and she really just did like a complete 180 on what she was doing in life. She still had the same career, she still had the same family and friends and everything, but she just changed things up. And you know, the kind of life and the personality that she has now, that she's like less fearful, um, and she's like managing this really high powered job with three children at home and she's chosen to do that without a man. Um, not that I'm trying to get it without a man, but I just really like to sit down with her. Mm. And plus Grey's Anatomy got me through med school. Yeah. And you know, all of her actors, I would love to sit down with them. Kerry Washington, Viola Davis. Mm. I feel like if we if Chandra, who plays um, Bailey. If I, I if I was gonna invite a woman, I don't, I don't think you believe me, but Beyonce. Because I want to know what the big hype is. I want to know. What, I want to know what she's actually like. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I'd want to know. Yeah, I'd want to okay. get to know Beyonce. If you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? <laughs> money. Is that too deep? <laughs> money. Would it be money? Um, money's the easy answer, isn't it? Um, if I could change the, anything about the way I was raised. Just before we start, our parents watch this. Don't be offended. We, you know, we love you. Yeah, no, I'm not loving it, but you did a great job. But anyway, we, we were broke, innit? <laughs> we weren't broke, bro, but we were broke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, 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 just to clear up. Um, I found it very offensive when someone once told me that I, um, I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. Um, someone said that. Yeah. Um, Okay. So, on the but on the other end, like I wasn't homeless. Yeah, yeah. I had everything that I needed. You weren't in poverty. But <laughs> like everyone that I lived around, yeah. everyone else surrounded by, um, we're doing better than, than we were. So yeah, now money is the easy answer. But I think um, if I'm honest, if I could change anything about the way that I was raised, I would have been allowed to um, compete and pursue my dreams of. Uh, athletic success. Really? Mm. Even though that meant doing it on a Sabbath? Yeah. Would you? Yeah, because I think it would have been nice to know that I wasn't good enough rather than me having that same conversation with loads of other people that are in the SDA church and be like, yeah, my mum can, mum can have made it still, but obviously church in it. I'd like yeah. to know that, like, yeah, I just wasn't good enough. Because I've always but you've always was. said that if you actually yeah well I always like I'm saying I believe that I would have got yeah, to yeah, a certain but, level but you always said that if you got to that level you think you'd be a different person today you think you'd be like not a nice person you've always said that as well yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. interesting I'm so surprised you said that mm, but I don't, okay. think, I don't think I'd have made it though that's what I'm saying I would I'd ne- I would have never made it to the prem yeah I'm not that techie in football but that's um, what you would change matting mm, okay yeah. cool um, and for me one thing I changed about the way I was raised um. So I think for me, one thing different to the way I was raised, I think that I would have wanted to be taught a little bit more financial literacy. And because like my parents, they did really well with their finances, I think, um, from what I can see. And there wasn't ever any like um, struggles around money that I heard about. And I was taught to like budget. Because I remember when I went to university, my dad would do spreadsheets with me. But some, still, like, I got into adulthood where I was managing my own money and I still, like, was like, oh, man, I didn't know that. Or I wish I knew a bit more about that, like, how to manage credit cards and a bit more information on debt and, you know, like, the ratios between spending and saving and, and giving away and just stuff like that. Mm. Um, like, now I'm learning them and I can see that my parents did it quite well. I'm like, yo, you could have given me a few more little lessons. A few mm. more lessons on it. They give it me now, like if I ask now, but it would have been nice to have a bit more of it. Just a bit more about how things work. That's it. What is the greatest accomplishment of your life? I don't know. I feel like I've done a few. I feel like I've accomplished um, some good things. But so what's the greatest? But the great, <laughs> the greatest one. Um, I feel like I have you know raised in a happy daughter. Like my daughter is so happy. Mm. She's so so happy. She really is. Um, and she's like really independent and secure. She doesn't know how to eat properly, but I feel like it's a really big accomplishment, like being a good mother. I think like I was always so worried, and even now, you know, you worry like, oh, am I being good? But I think looking at my child, I know she's only one and a half, but I feel like, man, I'm breastfeeding for 11 and a half months. Mm. You think that real? It's like, I just want to thank me, you know, Snoop Dogg's speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to thank me.
I want to thank me for believing in me. <laughs> Having no days off, yeah. Um, I think that's my greatest accomplishment, yeah. Um, I think my greatest accomplishment is finding a career um, I'm good at, being successful in that career so far as well. Um, I went from So I went from being in, I think from year four to about year nine, year 10. Like I was on report at school, like the whole time. Um, I wasn't a terrible child. Well, I say this and everyone's like, oh, you were on report for that long. Um, but I knew the boundaries where I used to push all the time. I was, um, I, was, yeah, a, I, was, I, was I was a naughty kid. Yeah. But you weren't like an evil kid. Yeah, so I was a naughty kid. Um, come to year 11, my GCSEs, my head of year, whole time is cook. Um, called my mum and was like, don't let Rock come in for your GCSEs um, because I was going to bring down a school average. Um, so that's like that's the point at where I was at um, when I was leaving school. Can I just say, why does every, like, so many black people have this dumb story? It's annoying. Mm. But anyway, go on. Um, so, like, so, so go from there where someone's telling me, don't do my GCSEs, and now I'm teaching mm -hmm. people uh, to do their GCSEs. Yeah, I think the fact that I'm now at this point here. Uh, yeah, it took me a little bit longer to get here, but uh, I'm, yeah, I'm doing it. And I mean, if, if all those teachers could look at me now, I think they'd be very surprised. Um, that's nice. That's, I think that's a really good accomplishment. Yeah, so yeah, it feels good. What do you value most in friendship? Yeah. Other than the ability to reference and get references at any moment in time. Um, Reference it. Referencing is really, really important. Like I should be able, I should be able to reference music. I should be able to reference films, and they should be able to get that reference. If you say a line in it. If I say a line, they should be able. That's to your most. It. That's your most value. I said other than that, that is really, really important. Though. <laughs> right. Your poor, you poor thing. Like your wife just ain't really there, is she? <laughs> that's really important. Though. Um, yeah. Like, but you do have some friends where you guys know like the whole script of a now, movie. No, but you're not mad though. But when you make obscure references as well, thinking that no one's going to get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that person's like... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. you and Ash. You and Ash and your references. You two used to live together and I was just like, listen, I don't even know what's going on with this Different communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, come on. Um, reliability. I want to be able to rely on my friends. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's that's the, the biggest thing. Like, mm -hmm. if I turn around and I say to him, like, I need you to do this. This is going on, mm -hmm. or like, I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a pickle. It's I'm in a sticky deal. situation. Help me. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> this is not a drill. Um, references. references. <laughs> um, but yeah, if 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 that's if I'm in that situation, I want to be able to turn around to my friend and be like. Fam, I need you. I, sometimes I don't want to have to say that I need you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you want um, them to be reliable. Yeah, because I feel as though that's something that I would... Yeah, and because um, you don't, you don't, you're not in that situation that often. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like yeah. someone's always I'm needs help. I'm a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I probably have been a mess before, but... Yeah, yeah. but you're not now. Okay, yeah. cool. And my most valued thing in friendship, um, I think it would be ease, like effortlessness, mm. um, and like no guilt. It's basically, you know, as we get older, we're all running busy lives. And I don't like those friendships where, you know, say it's been a few months and you've not spoken and it's like this big deal and it's like, oh, you know, oh, we haven't spoken in this long, what's happening? And I, I just, that conversation just like, uh, it just drains me in it. I don't wanna be made to feel bad about it. Let's just understand it. Those friends where you haven't spoken to them in months, but then you meet up and it's just like this effortlessness and you both understand where you are in life and you kind of have that thing where you can just jump back in where you were. Mm. That's what I value in friendship because I'm not somebody that's, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna be able to call you every week or meet up at the drop of a hat and stuff like that. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I've ever really been like that. Um, like me and my best friend, we won't sit on the phone for hours and end and we never even did that really when we were teenagers either, but we'd make sure we'd meet up and it's always just, you know, we, we carry on from where we left off and that's what I appreciate in friendship. I think that's one, uh, there's other things as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. but my most valued thing is that ease. I don't like having that conversation, oh, we've not spoken in ages, what's happening? Oh, we need to catch up and we, oh. I was like, can are we you, just, like we're talking right now, can we just talk? Are you or Craig it, David? Are we in about filming in? No? Yeah, okay then. No. All right, we can do the references, but yeah, basically <laughs> like that, isn't it? Like this whole thing of, oh, what's happening? And oh, what's going on? Oh, that whole conversation, it just makes me not want to talk to you. Share with your partner an embarrassing moment in your life. 
Oh my gosh, just thought of one. Yeah, okay. I've got an embarrassing moment. Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, I just thought of my embarrassing moment. Oh, I was mortified. Okay, so at the end of A levels, before we went to, um, before we went off to uni, me and three of my friends, we all went to Tunisia. So it was like friends we've been, you know, friends for years, and it was two guys, two girls. It's me and my best friend, and um, two guy friends as well. Um, we all knew each other from church. Anyway, <laughs> we're in Tunisia, and I remember we went jet skiing. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe we're telling this story. Okay, we went jet skiing. Um, and you know, they have a photographer on the beach that's like taking all these pictures and stuff. And so we went jet skiing, obviously the water's everywhere, we're going really fast. It was me and Adam on the jet ski, we're like, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> and you know, you're like, just going a bit crazy, donuts and everything. And then we, mm. we come off the jet ski, and as I'm stepping off, Liz is like, I'm like, oh gosh. And you know, like sometimes your bikini top comes down a little bit. And obviously I had a, I had a life jacket on, but like it'd come out and you know, you could see my boob. You could see my boob, but Liz told me in it. And I was like, oh crap. And then like, I, you know, yeah, sort yeah. myself out. All cool, didn't think anyone saw. Then we walk in to go and look at the pictures. Mad sweater. <laughs> They'd caught it on picture. There was like pictures of it. And then it was like, oh my gosh. And then like, obviously our two friends had seen it. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, oh my gosh, turn around, turn around. And like, it was like, turn around. And she's like, delete the pictures. Delete them now. Delete all <laughs> oh, that. And then they delete the pictures. Yeah, oh my gosh, I think I told you that before. It, just, nah, nah. it was like a flashback. Oh, the mort mortified, mortified. So that didn't, um, like encourage you to be a um, pay free model or anything like that. That's really good. That's really good. Because I was having your first shoot. That's cool. That's good. Oh my gosh, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, that was my embarrassment. Oh my goodness, that was. Yeah, that was terrible. But anyway, go on. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. I've got a lot of embarrassing moments. But I'll probably go for the persona that I had throughout my. Uh, childhood. Don Chisma. No, no. Why are you? Why are you doing that? <laughs> you used to call yourself Don Chisma, and you like scratched it into the piano at church. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did because when I went to church, I saw. Master C. Oh, sorry, that was Master C. So anyway, my persona through my adolescent years uh, was quite embarrassing. Uh, for example, yeah. Um, I went to my year 11 prom. That's not embarrassing. Oh, you're not embarrassed about that? Hold tight, the fall. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was fine. Yeah, see, I told you there's a lot of embarrassing moments. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, you went to your prom, you attended them? Yes, I went to my year 11 prom um, in a black suit. It was too big for me. Um, a I think with a Burberry pink shirt. Oh my god, what is that? With a pink trilby. Oh my god! And my grandma's walking stick. What is oh my that? Gosh. Okay, that isn't yeah. enough. You just need to post a picture. Right. There aren't any that I can find. Oh, isn't there? Thank god. I've seen pictures though. Okay, so last question. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? I think I've got to answer for this. Gen one, one is genuinely, ge uh, generally, and then one's for me. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely should not ever joke about rape. Mm. Um, the reason why I say that is because even though it's not an explicit, it's okay to do that, the fact that you're joking about something, um, yeah, in context, and people in that room can understand, mm -hmm. and be like, oh yeah, nice to joke. Like, if, if me and you were to, was a joke about rape like it's not yeah, it's not yeah. gonna happen in it okay so but, that was the thing okay. yeah but if me and you were if if like if we made a joke in reference to it or something like that mm -hmm. you know <coughs> you know me and i know you you know like but even then you'd be like i'm gonna say wait yeah wait. why is this yeah so um okay. so i feel like that's a, it's almost like a dog whistle mm -hmm. to people to be like oh wait this is okay um so i don't think you should have a joke about rape yeah and what's the other uh the other thing me personally um is race i still think you should joke about people's race um something that they can't choose. Um, I'm not saying it's something that they're not proud of. Uh, I'm proud of my, my race and my heritage, but I just don't think you should joke about that. Um, I've had it in the past where people have told me it's a joke um, and it hasn't ended as a joke. Would you say a joke about other people's race? 
you can joke about your own race. Um, you can joke about your own race because you can joke about yourself. You can joke about whatever you want. If it's, your own if, if, it's yeah, if it's pertaining to you, you can say whatever you want about yourself. Um, yeah, you should you should you should be positive about yourself. But mm -hmm. if you want to make good or bad jokes about yourself, you're entitled to do that because it's all about you. Yeah. Um, but you you don't. Yeah, joking about other people's race. Yeah, I don't think you have the right to say what you want about somebody else. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, no, you do, but you should think yeah, about it. Yeah. You should think so, yeah, I think I, I don't think you should joke about other people's race. Cool. And for me, you shouldn't joke about my kid dying. I don't want to hear any jokes about that. Don't think it's funny. And, um, like, you know, about kids dying, you know, children dying. No one, like, make it. Or even, like, you know, a rhetorical situation about, like, your kid dying or something. I just don't want to hear about it. Um, I don't know if people joke about things like that. Um, but don't hear it but that is the end those are our videos so Bombshell. <laughs> so this is um yeah so this is a really good date night thing the first time i went through these questions we were on a really nice walk when isabella was quite small and i think it's good to like go through them all um especially if you're trying to get to know somebody and to keep revisiting them people always ask you know how do you keep the spark alive and it's by staying connected the answers to these things will always change won't they and so um keep connected go somewhere nice and picturesque don't do it you know when you're running 41 minutes late from checkout in your hotel room that's probably not the best time to see the questions like we've chosen um but do it somewhere that's picturesque have it over dessert or you know some nice cocktails or mocktails whatever you, you like but yeah thank you so much for watching and if you've gotten this far well done please like subscribe and we'll be back soon and share oh and share thanks peace